Good Yo. afternoon, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to this. Good Yo. afternoon, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to this week's Impact Wrestling Media Teleconference. This is Ross Foreman. But we have an explosive one today. Uh, we are going direct to Georgia. We're going to bring in the one and only Scott Steiner. Scott, welcome to the media teleconference. Well, fuck off, Ross. You're wasting too much of my time, man. It's like, you try to call me up, tell me to call me at 2 o'clock. It's two minutes after 2. What happened at 2 o'clock? Shit. I'm well, sorry, we're, Ben. We're, this traffic we're, sucks, man. Going down uh, the highway, oh, in the fast lane. I, I guess it's, it's, a, it's a good day for... I guess it's a good day for you, Scott. No, I mean, I started out good. I was fine when I first woke up. Then this traffic here sucks. Go ahead, ask me a question. Well. Here I got pissed off. What is it? Well, let me ask you about redemption. This Sunday, you're teaming with Eli Drake against LAX with Santana and Ortiz. And, of course, you got Conan on the outside. Yeah. Conan's going to be doing what he always did when we're at NWO. He's going to be carrying my bags after, the, after this match and shining my belt. Maybe my shoes, too. Actually, he might come and cut my grass. I'm going to have all three of them, really. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. All righty. Your, your thoughts about uh, Santana and Ortiz? Well, they'll be, they, will, they will be with uh, Conan cutting my grass. And I actually have a, a uh, tea spot where I need a, uh, like the, on the grounds where you have to be putting, so they better be just right. I hate golf, but they better be cutting my grass right. That's what I don't understand. Why is why is uh, Trump Trump wants to keep on all the Mexicans, but who's going to cut the grass? Seriously, I mean that's a legitimate question. Oh, I I actually got a better question for you. I just can't picture you wearing knickers to play golf. I don't. Who's gonna and who's gonna say you, you got to wear your proper attire? Yeah, they want you to wear a collared shirt. I don't wear a collared shirt. I'm wearing, you wearing a white. collared shirt? No, I wear a white beater out there. Not surprising. What about teaming with Eli Drake? Uh, you know, I really, I never really knew Drake before. Uh, before he called me up and they made me offer to pay me to help him come beat some people up, but he's uh, uh, he's actually he's very talented. And uh, he definitely has the mic skills to back everything else up. Uh, and I think, you know, he's he's going to be on top for a while. He's definitely a, one of the top guys in professional wrestling today. And that's only right. been from meeting. Okay. That's short from meeting with him a couple of times. So he's definitely, the potential is unlimited with uh, Eli Drake. I usually don't don't like too many people, but he's good. That I know for sure. Uh, And with that, we will open at this point. uh, All I can say is good luck. Uh, Scott's in a great mood, as you can tell. Uh, Identify yourself and your media outlet, and please limit it to one question and one question only so we can get through everybody on the call. Ryan Ryder here for Main Event Radio. Scott, one of your former protégés, Petey Williams, is going for the X Division Championship against Matt Seidel this Sunday at Redemption. Your thoughts on Petey and his championship opportunity? Uh, Petey will have a chance to be look, uh, bleach his hair and guys look like me again. You know, uh, that's when he has most success. That's when people thought he was uh, paying attention to him. And then, as a matter of fact, that's when his uh, his wife loved him the most because she thought it was actually me. So I have nothing but uh, love and respect for Petey and, and his wife. Uh, but, you know, I think he's going to do great. Uh, Petey's a good guy. And, you know, and he's even a better-looking guy when he bleaches hair and, you know, we call him little Petey Pump. Hey, it's uh, Joey Mills from the Sport Bible. I um, just wanted to ask, um, obviously, you've been a star in every major organization in pro wrestling over many years. I just wondered That's what... That's the world famous, bitch! 
I just wondered what you thought the key to your longevity at the top level is and how you've managed to stay at the top for so long. Uh, it was definitely a way, you know, I trained throughout my career, you know. Before I was in professional wrestling, there was a lot of people know I was in amateur wrestling. You know, the first first year I got to uh, University of Michigan, I had to train with the uh, the guy who was basically the first American to be a uh, Olympic champion in Greco-Roman. So that was, that was my introduction to uh, being a college wrestler, is helping train with him. And, and I trained with him for five years. So, uh, so that really made me afraid of no one. You know, if I can, you know, train with a Olympic champion, one of the best ever in the world at, you know, at, at Greco-Roman, uh, I knew the sky was the limit. And this, you know, longevity was, you know, I've never really taken a day off of training, and that's that's the key to to everything. You know, the one thing I do wish I could do is more is stretch. But, but but my freaks make make sure I'm limber, you know. That's you know, they don't call me big bad booty daddy for nothing. I mean, I'm pretty limber, and you know, I, there's there's little uh, you know positions that these uh, freaks want me to be in, and you know, so I wouldn't say I'm too limber, but they make sure I'm limber enough because you know, trust me, they're satisfied. <laughs> That's great. Thank you, Scott. This is Big Ray for OneWrestling.com. Uh, Mr. Pump, or Mr. Big Papa Pump, Scott Steiner. Uh, I have a good friend. His name is Bill After. He wanted me to ask you a specific question regarding Shoney's, the restaurant that uh, you help run over in Georgia. He wanted to know, next time you guys are on a road trip, what are you going to have Bill try out there? Anything special over at Shoney's? Tell us a little bit about Shoney's, sir. Uh, Bill, Bill can come in and get whatever he wants. We have a... Uh, a limited amount of American food, uh, you know, from hamburger steaks to uh, seafood. And plus we have the world famous uh, uh, buffet that's been going on since 1946. And then the difference with my store, it's a new product. My store is a new prototype where I also have a, a bar, you know, with uh, alcohol, beer, you know, anything you want, any drink. You, we're actually coming up with a new drink going to call called... Uh, Big Papa Punch, and then, you know, drink one of those, and you know, uh, you'd be lucky to walk out the door. But, uh, but the food is great. I got great cooks, great uh, servers, uh, and uh, I'm very proud of it because, you know, the one thing, I, one of the reasons why I really got into into the food business, restaurant business, is because you know, I used to we travel so much, and we always have a hard time finding good places to eat, you know, late at night, and so. I always make sure that, you know, my, my restaurant has the, you know, great food and, and, uh, you know, uh, great drink and, and have, you can have a good time. I have, uh, 27 TVs in there and it has a private dining. So it's, uh, it's, it's a new prototype. It's not your Sony's that has been, you know, around since 1947. It's a new prototype. So people are surprised when they first come in. Well, it sounds like the place to be. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Steiner. Oh, no problem, man. Stephanie for Steel Chair Magazine in UK. Thank you, Scott, for your time. Uh, just wanted to ask you a simple question. Uh, you were 35 years in your career. Uh, what what motivates motivates you to continue and to keep punching people? Thank you very much. Well, I don't really uh, punching people has always been my motivation. Uh, I don't know why you know. For some reason, a lot of people piss me off, so there's great pleasure of punching people. But other than that, there also, you know, I also love wrestling in front of, you know, in front of the fans, for the crowd, and there's nothing like a rush, like getting in the ring and and wrestling. So, and, you know, it's that that's really my motivation because the, the love of wrestling and uh, and the love to uh, knock somebody's teeth down the throat. I mean, it's great. You know, you should try it sometime. You get you married. If you're not married, if you're married, try punching your guy. He'll he'll stay in line. If you're not married, you. Oh, hey, hey. Stephanie, uh, are you still there? 
Yeah, I'm there. I, I had you on mute, so I, we didn't uh, hear your, your answer. He, he was asking you uh, a question. If I was married, no, I'm not. Oh. You gotta get married and punch a guy around. I have great two brothers if I wanna punch them. I have two brothers like to punch if I Oh, there you go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Todd. Thank you very much. Uh, all right. <clears throat> Hi, Scott. Uh, Donna Corby here from the Irish Daily Mirror. Uh, just wondering, what are your thoughts on everything that, uh, that's been happening with Conor McGregor over the last few weeks? I know you're no stranger to controversy yourself, and he's, uh, he's been making a lot of headlines. Yeah, he, he definitely knows how to uh, command the stage uh, uh, and make an entrance or make an exit, whatever he was doing at uh, Barclay Center, you know, doing that dolly through the through the class, but no, he's definitely uh, well. He makes he's must see. People want to see him. What he does next because he's unpredictable, and uh, you know it's great and, uh, for MMA, and that's why he generates the crowd. It generates the the, the cash flow, and, and people want to buy the papers to see what he does next. So uh, he definitely uh, you know knows what he's doing. Uh, Scott, this is Harry here from NBC Sports Radio's Pro Wrestling 247 On Demand. First off, thank you for your time today. Harry, you got to speak up. Harry, you got to uh, speak up. Okay, this is Harry from uh, NBC Sports Radio's Pro Wrestling 247 On Demand. And first off, I want to thank you for your time today. Oh, uh, no problem. Sir, you're, you've already had an illustrious career in professional wrestling, and now you are poised to challenge for the Impact Tag Team Championship with Eli Drake at Redemption this Sunday. Could you break down the mathematical probability of LAX defeating yourself in the name of Dummy? Oh, man. You'd be, you'd be surprised how many people want me to, to come up with another uh, math equation of why I'm going to beat somebody and what's the mathematical uh, summation of how I'm going to do it, and uh, actually, I haven't thought about that of the actual percentages wise. But I definitely, from from here to Sunday, I'll, I'll figure something as, with the measurement proof of there was uh, two Mexican Americans having a chance against uh, against me and Eli. But I actually can't come up with a, a, a percentage thing right now. Real quick, how does it feel to be known to, for that to be your most infamous promo? Uh, uh, that does get a lot of airtime. I wouldn't say it's my most, it's my, it's one of the most recent, but there's, there's been a lot that people, you know, that people like, and, but it's great. I mean, I went over to, actually I went over to Ireland and, and the UK and, uh, the guys that brought me over had that that whole equation on on the screen, and, you know, and it made the people laugh. It was actually, but it, you know, it made sense to me, you know. Hi, Scott. It's Oliver Newman here from Broken Book Warriors Wrestling Podcast. Thank you very much for your time today. Oh, no um, my, uh, my question is, uh, who would you consider your friends in the Impact Wrestling locker room? Say that again. Who would you consider your friends in the Impact Wrestling locker room? Uh, well, I try to stay away from making friends because you never know when, who you're going to have to beat up, you know. So kind of takes, takes the edge off when you got to fight somebody who's your friend, you know. So I, I try not to make friends because I'd much rather punch somebody than, you know, be friends with them. So... I really, as, especially now when I just coming back and I really haven't got to know over them, you know, I have to say, you know, Eli is, is actually a pretty, pretty cool dude, you know, and he's definitely, I'm impressed with his talent, but as far as friends, I, I don't call anybody my friends at this point. Thank you very much. All right. Scott, we're going to go to an email question from Dave Clay, and he asked, what fat ass surprised you with his toughness in your career? Uh, 
I'm pretty much I wrestled a lot of badasses, and you'd be surprised how how tough some of these guys are. It's like uh, you know, stealing sugar from a fat man is a, is a is you know pretty pretty hard to do, you know. And that's I think they so they they have a uh, definitely a tolerance. You know, you can't push a fat guy away from a TV uh, TV with his banquet dinner, you know. So it's it's hard, you know. These these fat asses are. Uh, are pretty tough because you know they usually are physically, and mentally abused because they're fat. And, and believe it or not, as crazy as it sounds, most fat guys don't like to be called fat asses. I mean, are you kidding me? How can you not call a fat guy fat asses? So you know, so you call a guy a fat ass, you miss, immediately gets upset, which therefore makes it much harder for you to beat him. But man, there ain't no fat ass ever gonna hang. A one-on-one with genetic freak. Hey, Scott. John Corrigan from the Wrestling Estate. It's 2018. You are the talk of the wrestling world right now, heading into redemption. Did you uh, ever see yourself wrestling this long and, and being on top this long? No. I never really did. But, the, you know, the strange thing about it is, you know, I when WCW... Close. I actually retired then, and you'd be surprised how bored you get. And then, you know, I've, I've taken periods of time off, but you know, there's some about you know wrestling and wrestling in front of people and meeting the fans. It's 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 addicting, really. And and the and the love of wrestling keeps me going, you know. So no, I, I really the longevity is is you know I, I I've said. Man, when I was young, I man, I'm gonna retire early. But then, what do you what do you do to replace that excitement? You know, that, that's the whole deal. Like, how do you how do you replace that rush? How do you you know replace the adrenaline rush? It's it's hard to do, you know. So no, that, to answer your question, I never thought I'd be still be wrestling, but I'm doing it out of out of, uh, out of love for the sport. So I'm surprised as much as everybody else, but. I don't know. People, people seem still want to, you know, pay to see me. Pay, you know, come see me wrestle. Come see, uh, you know. It seems like crazy. Never goes out of style. You know, people want to see what I do next, and and I'm so. And the thing is, I can't predict what I'm going to do next. It, it all happens when it happens. You know, so it's as much a surprise to me as to you know everybody else. That's what we love about you. Thanks for coming back, man. Oh, yeah, because, you know, when I get into wrestling, that is really the only time that I am free, you know, free from assault charges, <laughs> assault battery, you know, you can beat anybody up, you know, so, and, you know, in the real world, you can't, you can't just go out and punch somebody, but in wrestling, you can, you know, can't hit anybody with a pipe, can't, you know, steal a girlfriend, make love to her, and then he can't do shit about it, so, no, it's like, when you're wrestling, that's really the only time I'm free, so uh, it's great. Hey Scott, it's uh, Greg Oliver from Slam Wrestling. Uh, you you've been wrestling a long time, as we just talked about. How how has the actual in ring storytelling changed, or or has it? And I guess related to that, are the fans the same today as they were when you started back in the eighties? Uh, I really st- still try to wrestle, you know, the way I've always wrestled, balls to the wall, you know, just go out there and get, give it everything I have and. You know the best match on the card, and and uh, you know excite the crowd, and you know and you know in the process beat somebody up. So and have uh, the fans changed that? Yeah, have the fans changed that? I mean, beat somebody up? No, I mean if if a you know, fan crosses line goes over that barrier, I, I, you know they're free game. Once you do that, up you know you know. I'll take a free shot at them, too, you know? Okay, fair enough. Thank you. All right. Hey, Mr. Steiner. It's Big Ray for OneWrestling.com again. Um, there's no doubt that you are a legend in this business, and we heard some unfortunate news this morning that uh, the legendary Bruno San Martino did pass away. I just wanted to hear your thoughts on the living legend, well, on who was known, uh, the living legend, Bruno San Martino, and uh, did he have any influence on your career? Uh, Mr. Steiner, thank you. 
Uh, I never got the chance to watch because I never watched wrestling when I was a kid. But I met I met uh, Bruno a few times when I was in the WWF, and he was always a gracious guy. He was always you know nice. He always talked to him, and uh, and and the thing he he did in wrestling will will never be top for his you know undefeated for you know what eight years he held the belt and then got hurt and then won it again for another three years. I mean, that's unprecedented, what the record he set as far as in and saw Madison Square Garden all those years in a row. So, no, he was definitely, he, he was an amazing wrestler. He, uh, he laid the groundwork for all of us generations to come after him. And he, and he was, uh, he really was ahead of it. He was a, uh, I was read the day where he broke the bench press record, world record. So, yeah, he was an amazing athlete, coming from a you know humble beginnings. You know? Hey Scott, this is Riju from Sports Kira in India. How are you doing today? Good. How you doing, man? I am doing good, man. Uh, so you are known for cutting some of the most entertaining unscripted promos. Do you think the overscripting of promos is killing the business these days? Oh yeah, it's it's some of the worst shit that you can do is to curb somebody's uh, you, know, you know professional uh, ways to express their feelings, express their the character they want to, or who they are. So for that, you know, for the idiots that script. Uh, you know, interviews is, that's, I mean, it's a travesty doing that. I mean, you, you just, you're basically like cookie cutter, you know, uh, having characters and it's, I mean, it's some of, it's, it's some of the worst things you do is, and, and the, fa- the thing is fans recognize that, and, you know, people do not want to see scripted interviews, uh, but that's just the way that they control you know, the the wrestlers nowadays, and it's it's uh, you know, if if they can't see that they're killing killing that, uh, they're idiots. Scott, we're going to go to an email question from Todd Moore, who asked, "Any chance your brother Rick joins you for this stint in Impact?" Oh, you never know, you know the. the the dog is a man's best friend, and you know, dog face grandma is always uh, near and close to what I do. You know, so I can't say no, and I uh, for sure. Hey, uh, Riju from Sports Kira again. Uh, what? How was the Impact Wrestling versus Lucha Underground event at WrestleCon? And did you have a fun time wrestling there? In India. No, uh, Impact versus uh, Lucha in, at WrestleCon. Oh, it was, it was good. I had, a, you know, the the, the crowd was electric. To, everybody was having fun, and when it's like that, it's it's that's when it's great to be in the ring when people actually are excited for you to be out there, and so that's what makes you know wrestling great, you know. So. I, I had a good time. Thank you. Hey, Scott. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful.com here. Uh, I, I wanted to ask you, Brian Cage uses the old uh, Steiner screwdriver move, which you used in TNA and, of course, throughout your WWF, WCW career. What do you think of him using that move? Have you seen his version? And if so, what do you think of it? No, I've actually never seen his version uh but you know it's uh how many people have copied my moves over you know frankensteiner they, they call it a hurricane round it's a frankensteiner uh you know the screwdriver you know the the reverse slam where you know do backflip and uh you know people have copied my moves uh throughout my career but you no know, it's just Imitation is the best form of flattery, and Brian Cage is actually 
uh, is a good guy. He looks he looks great, and I, I put him uh, as one of the guys in TNA to make a big impact. And you know, I, and hopefully he keeps on uh, uh, training and uh, working on wrestling where he becomes you know one of the in the best in the business because he has he has that potential. He has that he has a really good look. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Scott, Ryan Bowman from TheGorillaPosition.com. Uh, Conan was talking a lot of trash to you on your first night back, and you've never really been shy about your opinion. You talked earlier about how much you like beating people up, but do you have as much fun destroying your opponents verbally as you do physically? Uh, well, I actually verbally beat them up so I can actually physically beat them up, if that makes sense. I've... Because uh, I verbally beat them up to, because uh, if there's ever any hesitation, like oh, I don't really want to wrestle today, where I, you know, say I'm going to steal your girlfriend, take her home, show her what it's like to be with a real man. Hopefully, I'll get you a little incensed, a little pissed off to where, uh, you know, uh, that they really want to fight me. Then, then, then the shit's on. So one leads to the other. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I'm so antagonistic when I. Uh, do my interviews because I hope I'll piss you off, to, and then you uh, will actually think you man enough to uh, go on one-on-one with Genic Freak, and uh, then you realize realize that uh, not only can you hang me, with me verbally, uh, you can't hang with me physically. So I mean that's that's great to be able to dominate another worthless soul like that, and, and two different factions in one night. And then, then of course, then I do take his girlfriend back to the hotel room, and you know she'll never be the same, you know, because what you know, once you scream out, you know, big bad booty daddy, you, you know, life will, that's a life changing moment for uh, all female, all females that haven't been in contact with. So there's three I've stages of taking their manhood. Oh, I've changed a lot of females' uh, outlook on life. <laughs> Hi, Scott. David Dunn with the New Zealand Pro Wrestling Informer. Um, you've had a number of tag team partners over the years. Obviously, your brother, Rick, but more recently, there's been Petey Williams, there was Teddy Hart at the um, Lucha Underground event, and now you're teaming with Eli Drake. What is it that you look for in a tag team partner? Uh, keep up and stay out of my way. Uh, like, in most cases nowadays, it's like, when I first started wrestling my brother, you really knew what either one was going to do because, you know, there's nothing like a tag team with your brother. Uh, but most recently, you know, I'm kind of like a paid assassin. People call me in because they know my background. They know I'm one half of the greatest tag team to ever live in professional wrestling. So, uh, so as, if you're not my brother, just stay out of my way and, uh, and I'll, I'll do what I do. I'll do what I do, baby. Um, hi, Scott. It's uh, Joey from Sport Bible in the UK. I was just wondering, how does working for Impact Wrestling differ from your time in WWE and WCW? Uh, well, actually, right now, it's been pretty limited, but... Uh, it, it really doesn't matter, you know. If you know you want me to beat somebody up, I'll beat somebody. I don't care what under the uh, what banner it's under, you know. But you know, I, but I will have to say that you know the greatest organization I ever wrestled for was WCW. Okay. Hi, Scott. Uh, great pleasure to talk to you. It's Adam from the Impact Lounge in the UK. Um, you just said again, you're one half of the, one of the greatest tag teams of all time, when uh, I don't think anyone would uh, say to your face that they would disagree. But who do you think is number two in the list? And uh, what do you think of the current champs in uh, Impact? Uh, I would have to say... You're right about putting us number one, and but does, does it really matter after that who's number two, number three? 
as long as I'm number one, you know. It's about Road Warriors were tough. Uh, Doom was tough. Ron Simmons and Butch Reed. I mean, they were great athletes, you know. When um, we wrestled Bret Hart and Owen Hart, that, you know, they were good. I mean, I wrestled. Anybody there is to wrestle that we've wrestled as a tag team. So, uh, as far as ranking somebody number two is, uh, you know, you, you're okay. You're number two. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you make of uh, this incarnation of LAX? Obviously, very different styles to yourself. How, how do you face a team like that? Oh. Uh, I mean, they better enjoy their time up till Sunday, and then because they're going to be ex champions. And uh, mark my words, I'm going to tell you that. Hi, Scott. It's Oliver Newman here again from Broken Book Glorious Wrestling Podcast. Um, I just wanted to get your opinion on your least favorite wrestlers of all time. Oh man. That's 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 well documented, you know. Uh, I mean, pick a name. I, uh, the, the people I don't like, I've made known, uh, and I don't care what the stature was in your actually in the wrestling community. It's like if you're a piece of shit, you're a piece of shit, and I call you out. You know what I mean? So my uh, my list of people I don't like is you know for good reason. And the truth is, the people I've named, the truth has come out about them, you know? Hi, Scott. Um, it's Neil Murchis from Calling Sports Magazine in the UK. Um, obviously, you've had a massive career. I was wondering what's the proudest moment of it, or what, what you think is your proudest moment? Say that, say that again, you're breaking up. Sorry, um, what is the proudest moment of your career, please? Best moment of my career? The, the proudest moment? What are you most proud of achieving? Oh, I would, you know, I have to say that anytime you win a world title, whether it be tag team titles or, you know, becoming a world champion is is something to be proud of. But, you know, also if you, you set a record, that in most likely cases will never be broken and that's the attendance record uh, over in Pei Young, North Korea, where uh, 193,000 people, you know, three three nights in a row, you know, and, and you know, Vince can um, lie about his numbers all he wants in all these WrestleManias and pat them all he wants. That's one number he's never going to break. You know, he, he, you know, I watch these documentaries where you know, 93,000 people and. Pontiac Silverdome. It was back, but it wasn't no 93,000. Plus, 93,000, that's 100,000 less than we wrestled in front of. So he's, you know, he's always, you know, say he rules the wrestling world, but there's records, you know, that won't be broken. And that's one of them. Scott, we're going to go to an email question from Shubham, who asked, uh, how much in your prime did you bench and how much did you squat? Uh, uh, benching, it was like 625 and squatting, squatting in the weight room. I think I, I got pictures to prove I got, I think I squatted three girls on my back and then, but squatting after hours in my hotel, I think it was, you know, you know a couple dozen girls. Scott Harry here again from NBC Sports Radio's Pro Wrestling 247 On Demand. Um, you're one of the very few wrestlers to have worked for Impact during all of its incarnations, the Jarrett era, the Carter era, and now the Anthem era. Are there any defining differences between each era in Impact Wrestling that you've noticed? Uh, well, the, the first part when I wrestled for well, Jeff was the reason why it actually came in the first place was to, you know, help him out and have a, you know, a viable 
alternative to just one wrestling organization in the United States. And, uh, and then of course, you know, we formed one of the, one of the greatest factions in professional wrestling was the main event mafia with, you know, all the collections of, uh, former world champions. Uh, and, and, and that was great because we had, you know, most of the talent that is up in the WWE right now is, you know, Samoa Joe, Bobby Roode, AJ Styles. Um, those are the guys that we were going against. Those are the guys that we were trying to make. Those are the guys that we were trying to pass the torch to. And uh, and that was the most profitable, profitable time at TNA, you know, as far as viewership, you know, making money, merchandise, and all, all that stuff combined. And then, unfortunately, that led me to my next incarnation was work for, you know, dumbass Dixie Carter that, you know, brought in uh, you know, racist uh, Hulk Hogan. And... Uh, and all those other guys. So, and that, that, that's what killed it. You know, one was ran into the ground, you know, and of course, you know, I let my feelings be known. And then she tried to, you know, put a lawsuit on me with, because I was, did the stuff I was saying on Twitter about Hogan and all the stuff, which all, it was all true. And a big piece of shit tried to get me arrested saying that, saying that I, uh, assaulted his wife in the airport uh, thank God that you know they had cameras there, and uh, and that's when I left. So, uh, which leads me to the, oh, my third incarnation is uh, that remains to be seen. Uh, like I said, this is like my second match and second time in. So I'm just you know uh, see how this goes and see what happens. You know, is and see how you know why we can take this company and see how much it can grow. Good afternoon, Scotty. Hey, what's up? Andre Corbiel from WrestlingWithWrestling.com, and I've got an interesting question for you today. Whether it's Big Papa Pump or Scotty and Rick Steiner, no matter how you slice it, dice it, floss it, toss it, flip it, dip it, trip it, or sip it, you're easily a first ballot Hall of Famer, no matter what the company. My question to you, Big Bad Booty Daddy, is would you accept the nomination as the next esteemed member of the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame later this year, if it was indeed offered to you and even your brother, Rick? Uh, uh, woof, I never really thought about that. Uh, I don't know. Is right, something? brother? Uh, I'll have to think about that. I'm already in two Hall of Fames. I'm in the Hall of Fame in Michigan. And I'm in the Dan Gable Hall of Fame, which to me is one of the highest honors you can have is being anything associated with, you know, Dan Gable and the museum. A museum, actually, the Hall of Fame where you can actually go visit. It's actually a concrete building with bricks, slabs of st- stone and uh, cement. You can actually Amen. go to that fucking town and go visit the Hall of Fame. Not like this bullshit that WWE has where some imaginal, imaginal place where it doesn't exist. They have all these uh, uh, busts of people, busts of wrestlers, busts of... Now, what the fuck? They make it a bust of you can't put it anywhere. Where do they put it afterwards when they leave the Hall of Fame center? It goes back to a warehouse. Except for the Macho Man goes into uh, Stephanie and McMahon's uh, bedroom and uh, Ric Flair goes into Triple H's. I mean, it's it's all a bunch of bullshit. See, you now you piss me off with that question. <laughs> hey, it's Scott Snyder. It's Julian from Alternative Minds and the Wrestling Court Podcast. How are you doing today? Good. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm wide awake. <laughs> I'm glad that you're back on the Impact of Wrestling. I love your run so far. But my only question is, what are your thoughts about Triple H these days? Uh, they're the same as I always thought of him. I mean, nothing's changed. I mean, read every word I said about him. Any, you know, any media source, my, my opinion of him hasn't changed one bit. <laughs> 
Hey, Mr. Steiner, it's Big Ray for OneWrestling.com for the final. Oops, sorry, Big Ray, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I just did. You can call back in. Uh, Stephanie for Stitcher Magazine in UK again. Um, I wanted to come back to last year and your match at Slammiversary um, with Josh Matthews against uh, Joseph Falk and uh, Jeremy Borach and um, I think your thoughts on it. Um, and as I heard you saying that you wish you can be the new Impact Tag Team Champion, Second part of my question is, uh, are you planning to stay time? And thank you very much again, Scott. Uh, I really didn't catch the last part of your, the second question. But, uh, yeah, when I came back and wrestled with jo- against Joseph Park, uh, Jeremy Borash, and uh, Josh, uh, I mean, yeah, it was, that was, you got to understand, that was four months, five months after having soldier shirt. So I wasn't the, I was in the best shape as I could be at that time, but I'm better now because, you know, more time after surgery, I had surgery in February and I wrestled, what was that June? So, but, you know, we still could have won that match except for, you know, Abyss. I mean, that match should have been thrown out. Because I would start out wrestling with Joseph Park and all of a sudden Abyss comes out. How, like, how, I mean, how, how did I have a, you know, if they can have a review in the NFL, a replay, why why couldn't they do that in professional wrestling? They got cameras and studios and stuff like that. I mean, that that match should have been thrown out. So, you know, I'm still kind of, you know, pissed off about that. I'll be more pissed off if I like Josh, but I don't like Josh either. So, eh, it don't matter. But uh, I, can, I can tell you right now I'm in better shape than I was then because I had more time to work out and uh, rehab my shoulder, so it'll be interesting uh, to see, you know, the progress I've made and I'm ready to be uh, dominated again. Hi, Scott. It's Neil Rogers from Calling Sports Magazine in the UK. Um, I asked earlier what was your proudest moment. I'm wondering if there's anything that you, you wish you'd got to achieve in your career that you weren't able to. Is there anyone you wish you'd wrestled or any championships that you didn't manage to to hold? Uh, yeah. When I first went up to WWE in 2003, they they asked me who I wanted to wrestle. And I said, sure, I'll, I'll go against The Rock, you know. At the time, he was he was you know, the best they had, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, unfortunately, that didn't turn out, and I got stuck with it, you know, freaking idiot, so, uh, that, that's probably, you know, that's probably my only regret, you know, Rock's a good guy, he's a great entertainer, and I thought, and I thought we could have did, you know, good things together, you know, so, that was, that was about it. Now we're going to go to an email question from Jerry P. He's curious, would you have ever considered a career or at least a, a shot at uh, mixed martial arts? Uh, um, uh, I never thought about it at the time because when I came out of college, that really wasn't an option. Uh, you know, there's guys that I had, I've had wrestled in college, um, and like Don Fry, he was he was the uh, ch- champion, and I beat him in, in college. And then uh, you know when I was at Michigan, Mark Coleman was at Ohio State. Well, he was at uh, uh, at the Ball State first, then he transferred to Ohio State. Um, and and they're, they're both good guys, but uh, at the time. It really wasn't an option, and plus my brother was already in wrestling for two years, so that's really one thing I want to do is wrestle with my brother. So, uh, but that, that man, that's a hard way to make a living, man. I, I just saw Robbie Lawler at uh, WrestleCon uh, this past weekend, and uh, uh, yeah, it's like it, it's a tough way to make a living, man. Hey, 
Hey, Scott, Donna Corby again from uh, the Irish Daily Mirror. Just uh, to follow up on the, the question I was asking you earlier, what would you have done if you were in the bus when Conor McGregor threw that, that dolly through the window? Uh, well, it depends. If if I had a problem with him, he was doing it at me, things would have been, But if I didn't have a problem with him, I mean, it's not my bus, you know. I mean, if it was my bus, then I'd have a problem with it, you know. But if it wasn't my bus, you know, there's so many variables to that question. Is it my bus? Is it not my bus? Is he throwing it at me? Is he throwing it at somebody else? But if I would have got hit with the, the the glass and all that stuff, then, you know, you know, I probably would have. He grabbed that dolly and shoved it up his ass. Hi, Scott. It's Neil Rogers from Calling Sports Magazine again. Um, you were no, always known as an innovator with your moves. You, you invented the Frankenstein that you mentioned earlier. Is there anyone around at the moment who you admire because of how of the moves that they created? Uh... You know, there's, there's, you know, like, uh, Mysterio, he does, you know, I'm good friends with Ray, and he does a variation of Frank Steiner. Uh, but there's a, there's a lot of good talent out there that, um, but it's, it's hard coming up with, with new moves that people haven't done before. It was, it was uh, I wouldn't say it was easier back then, but, you know, think about it. Before we did, you know, before I did the Frankensteiner or, you know, you know, DDT up the top rope or Bulldog up the top rope or uh, Steiner screwdriver, uh, those are moves that have never been done before. So it's it's actually hard to, uh, to come up with new moves nowadays because uh, everybody has pushed, you know, the innovation uh, button to the to the max. So it's hard to come up with a new move. But there's a lot of guys that you know mix and match different moves to different variations to make it exciting. So there's yeah, there's a lot of guys out there that uh, have great matches and and, uh, uh, and put on a you know great display of athletic competition. Scott, this is Harry again from Pro Wrestling 247 at BC Sports Radio On Demand. Um, you've worked with a lot of great tag teams throughout your career. And one of my all-time favorites, and one of the, I think, the most underrated tag teams of all time is the Midnight Express with Jim Cornette. What are your opinions on Bobby Eaton and Stan Lane as a combination in their career? Oh, they were great. Uh, those guys, like the first guys that one of the first tag teams that we wrestled when my brother when I first came in NWA and you know WCW, um, and we had great matches with those guys. So uh, if they're underrated, they're not underrated by by in my eyes. I mean, and and. People, people could see how good they were. Just you know, for some reason, they're not highlighted as much. But I don't think I don't. Uh, but for people that were in the business, I don't think they're underrated. It's maybe by some people outside, but certainly not by any wrestlers that have been in the business. Hey Scott, uh, Rachel from Sports Kira again. So you were part of an Indian movie recently. How did that uh, film come about, and did you have fun shooting for that film? Say that again. Uh, so you were part of an Indian movie recently, right? Uh, did you have fun shooting oh. the film? And, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, that was. No, that was. I had a good time uh, filming that movie. Uh, it took me. I went to a, a lo- exotic locations. And then you know it went through some pretty cool places for the premiere, uh, but oh no, it was it was a good time. I had I had a great time filming it, and uh, 
And, you know, I think we're coming up with a follow-up coming up here in the next couple of months. So, no, I had a good time filming that. Good, thank you. Hey, Scott, Ryan Bowman from thegrillposition.com again. <clears throat> Every time we see you, you uh, throw in a few extra wrinkles and you do something to get people talking. Uh, do you got any hints for us of what you might have in store for your foes and your friends and even your freaks for this Sunday at Redemption? Uh, uh, man, I really haven't seen the stuff that I say or or do is it's nothing really that I might think about maybe a day or two or I might think of it like a couple of minutes before I walk out it's like it was I was just like I said man when I'm when I'm in the rest of the man my, I'm free my mind is free I, I, nothing but clear you know evil thoughts and you know some way I can destroy this guy or some way I can verbally attack him and Verbally shaken down, you know, it's like it just, it's kind of a spur of the moment thing. So, as far as me, you know, give me the heads up what I'm going to do, man. I, I have no idea to get out there. Is I mean, as crazy as that sounds, it's, it's uh, you know, I, I mean, I can't walk around, you know, 24 7 act like a wild man. It's like, like when I get to the arena, man, that's that's when my mind wanders and I'm shit goes through my mind some things I can do uh, some things I can't because it's even though in wrestling it's still being legal you know so I, I can't say what I'm going to do but I always try to change up and have you know the best match on the card you know Hey Scott Big Ray from OneWrestling.com I just wanted to ask one final question was there ever a time you were in the ring with someone and you said to yourself man if this was a shoot this guy might give me a little bit of a problem. Who are some of the toughest guys you ever faced in ring that in a shoot would give you a problem, Scott? Thank you for your time today. Uh, uh, I mean, I've, like I said, I've wrestled everybody, but I've never got into a situation where, I mean, like, it would be challenging. You know, I wrestled big guys, uh, you know, some of the biggest guys in wrestling, but none of them were like, you know, I mean, surely, you know, let me just put it this way. Everybody in wrestling is, it's, wrestling is a tough way to make a living. So everybody that's in wrestling is pretty tough in their own way, you know. Uh, you know, but you hear, you hear the stories of all these guys who were, were tough, like Haku or, uh, you know, uh, barbarian. Uh, you know, Kevin Nash. Shit, and stuff. Kevin Nash, seven foot tall. You can, it'll be hard to fight a guy like that. But I never got to that point. You know, uh, that I would have to think, man, how would I, how would I beat his ass? It, it, but keep in mind, now, if you look at MMA, most of the champions that have been champions or were champions or could be champions were trained in wrestling. Most of the champions are wrestlers, so I never had, had a, well, I had to go, man, I got to take this guy and start, you know, grounding and pounding this guy. I never came to that thought because, you know, unless you trained in wrestling, you have no idea what you're doing. So I, I never, you know, certainly there's, you know, I just named some tough guys. And like, I never got down to, like, you know, fuck you, let's go, yeah. And it's hard for me to say, you know. So, but again, I uh, will say, there's no training like amateur wrestling. Hey, uh, this is Riju from Sports Kida again. Uh, is there any wrestler in Impact Wrestling or outside the company right now who you think could be the next Scott Steiner? Oh God, I'm not sure anybody. Would, I'm not sure anybody. Would, uh, as in the ring performer, it's tough. I mean, but do you really want to be a stunt stunner, man? I, I've, man, I got, I've gotten so much trouble with, you know, inside and outside the ring where I'm not sure that, you know, 
it, it, let me just put it this way. It takes a lot of mental strength and mental force, mental force to, to, you know, able to get in these, get in certain kind of troubles and then, you know, stick to it to where, like, you know, and stay the course, you know, so, uh, I don't know if I answered your question, but it's like, is there anybody that can be the next Scott I'm not sure that anybody could handle it. So, Scott, we have one final email question from Legendary Joseph. He wants to know if you could pick an opponent for a dream match, who would it be? Man, I, the, the, you know, I, like I said, I've wrestled almost everybody. Uh, so I have to say the only one that could be a dream was The Rock because I was one guy I never had wrestled. Uh -huh. you know, and I used to watch, you know, you know. We were doing Nitro, beating Raw, but then you still, you know, you know, take the other show and see what, you know, the other company was doing and, you know, Stone Cold had, did his stuff, which is which is cool. Uh, Rock did his stuff, which is cool. I mean, I would have to say Stone Cold and The Rock because I, I even though I wrestled Steve Austin WCW, he wasn't he wasn't Stone Cold. And I think our characters would match up good, and same with The Rock. And I think it, it could be pretty interesting both doing interviews and, and in the ring. You know, so. Those five, those two guys right there. Hi, Scott. It's Neil Rogers from Calling Sports Magazine again. Um, I'm wondering, is there anything in your career that you, if you had the chance again to do differently, that you that you would change? Yeah, I'd not go up to the WWF in '93. It was, you know, the worst mistake we ever made, you know. Because of the timing thing, he was going to jail for. Thought, everybody thought he was going to jail. He thought he was going to jail for, you know, everything and stuff. And uh, it was probably the worst time to be up there, you know. And, and you know, and that that was that was the first glimpse I got, of, you know, Mr. Man being a liar, you know. Well, Scott, with that, we will wrap it up. I uh, certainly appreciate your, your time, your, your candor, your uh, opinions on everything. We will give you a, a final thought now. Uh, Redemption this Sunday, you and Eli break against LAX. Of course, we have uh, Austin Aries defending the world title against uh, Pentagon Jr. and Phoenix. Uh, your thoughts heading into uh, Redemption on Sunday? Uh, yeah, you're going to watch me again become a world tag team champion with one of the best guys that are in Impact right now, you and I, Drake, and, uh, and he's uh, good on the mic, too, so it, it could be pretty interesting. So uh, I think, the, for the most part, the, the whole car up and down the roster is going to be good, so uh, it's going to be exciting, and I think uh, it'll be exciting to us. So, uh, and, you know, I get to meet up some I have me cut my grass when it's all said and done. Do you have a proof with uh, Austin Aries against Pentagon Jr. in Phoenix? What's that? Do you have a prediction on the main event? Uh, I have to go with the champion. All right. Scott, very much appreciated. As always, we will see you Sunday in Orlando. Media, I appreciate you calling in. We will talk to you next week. All right, man. TSC News TV with Fred Ricciani is your home for pro wrestling news, opinion, and event coverage. Check it out every Thursday mornings at 9.30 on New York City's MNN2. A live stream link will be available on TSC News' Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter page. And you can also check out Impact Wrestling every Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central on Pop TV and it's streaming on the PlayStation View. I'm Alan Wu. This is TSC News Radio.